Hi there everyone, welcome back to Weir Yard up in the loft with me and I'm going to talk you through some of the progress I've been making up here and in fact you can probably see over my shoulder a little bit of that so without further ado let's take a closer look. <laughs> over here we've got um, this area was just kind of a barren wasteland of boards up until about an hour or so ago and then I thought I would crack on and uh, get some ground cover and you can see that that's going very very quickly now this is a method which I used for over here uh, for all of this terrain but uh, the step I haven't used is the polystyrene underneath the ground is completely flat but it doesn't matter so I built up with the Gage Master grass mat as the bottom layer, just slap that down, it doesn't really need to be massively neat. And then on top of that, I then built up with a quick layer of sand after I sprayed it with water down PVA. Once the sand is down, uh, I've used uh, two different scatters. Now scatter different from the flock, um, and it's more of a, a ground level thing, just gives a sense of the greenery and the different uh, ground tones. That's gone on. On top of that, I then used two different types of static grass. One two mil, uh, summer, um, sort of summer flowers, summer meadow mix. And then another one, a different shade. And the, the important thing with this is the different shades just bring out this realism. You don't want a monoculture for the grass. I've put in these trees, these are K&M trees from Pico, variety of different sizes, so we've got uh, really small, next size up, next size up after that, and I've just kind of pushed them in there. I quite like these, I know that seagrass gives you a much better effect, but use what you have, and I've been recycling a lot of stuff, so that's uh, what we've got here, and then I've uh, ballasted the track in my normal way, and uh, that then hides the edges of the grass mat. And in turn as well, I've planted a couple of signals and I've glued back together a slightly broken line side hut. And that's gone in there as a sort of semi-derelict thing. In fact, I'm not sure whether it uh, shows up particularly well. But the door is hanging off its hinges on purpose. So it just looks like a little abandoned plate layers hut. Um, what else? Well, I've also done all the grass around here ballasting up here. I still need to do the embankment sides just over the other side there. So I'm going to get some scrunched up paper to just um, be able to go over the top with the PVA J cloth. I want to get that done before I uh, need to be away for a little while with work. So um, that will give that plenty of time to dry and uh, that's really what you want. You don't want to be working too quick with the subterrain when you're using the PVA J cloth, you know, there's no point in rushing because if you try and put the top layers on when it's still wet, you can just end up um, making yourself more of a mess than uh, anything else. But I hope you agree that this little corner has come together nicely. And if I try and get the camera down nice and low, the idea is that we get some nice angles for the train to come through. I'm thinking in particular for with the camera wagon. And by having these trees in between the tracks, it just breaks up the um, the angles that we get. In fact, I'm going to just move round over here and uh, just try and get in down nice and low. So what you can see there is hopefully the angles that that's opening up, which I think looks pretty good for when I'm going to be running trains through the camera wagon. I think that that it's really going to look the part. So um, also show you, I've got another tree there, ballasted, um, done my, my grass effects there. One of the other things as well is when you have these trees, I just thought I'd share this with you, you end up with a lot of mixed scatter that the, the trees themselves actually ha are made of in the bottom of the bags. Don't throw this away, but use this as a scatter onto the ground and it just, in my opinion, adds a little bit extra to the, the, the grass method that I use. And in turn, no point in wasting anything. 
But this isn't the only area that I've been working on. I just also like to share with you right over here in the corner. And of course, lighting is not necessarily the best, but yes, you can see I've started doing the hillside there. Now this is uh, the grass mat. I keep talking about this product and it is a really good product. It's from Gage Master and I find it really useful. Only discovered it relatively uh, recently, but uh, it's very good, especially for really hard to access areas there. And actually I think I've got a better effect than where I've used uh, a differing method over here without the grass mat. So maybe at some point I'll go over this with grass mat and you can do that with this grass mat. It will stick over the top of other things. It's very, very um, adaptive in the ways you can use it. So what that's doing over there is just starting to build up the hillside that will be behind the little bit of the housing scene. Those houses aren't fixed down uh, yet. So I need to cut another piece of grass mat in. I'm going to have to build up here because there's a bit of a retaining wall to go in. And uh, then I've got some cobbles to lay in there. And what I'm going to do is just lay a big area of cobbles. I've got plenty of the Metcalf cobbles. And um, then build up grass layers over the top of the cobbles because I think that's going to be an easier way to do it all. And uh, once all that at the back is done, I can start doing ballast and, and just bring the scenic stuff forward, get all this signal box all uh, put together. And um, then finally finish off this area here, which I started work on and then realised, actually, whoops, stupid me, need access to the back there. So that's probably the biggest area, the big millstone. And you saw what I'd been up to last time. So that's all coming together. And again, I want to get some trees in here just because I'm not 100% happy with that embankment. It's really difficult to actually work in there because of the way that the, the roof slopes down. So um, it's always best to try different techniques, see what works. And this grass mat really works for me. Now I'm going to show you, this is the big, this is the big roll of it. So um, effectively it's a large, large, I think it's about eight before roll of the stuff. It's not too badly priced. Now, if you buy the little pieces, I think they're comparatively expensive, but if you buy the big roll like this, I think it's about 37 quid, but it goes a long, long way. And there's no way I'm going to get all of this used. It's been used on another layout as well. And you see there, it's like on this paper backing. And then you've got this um, fairly short static grass effect on the top. And I just think this is a brilliant product to get started with the ground cover for doing grass effects. And as you can see with this new corner and also over there, that has got um, a degree of that grass mat being used in there. This is all grass mat on the bottom. And you can see the wrinkles at the end, that's because it's still wet. They will flatten themselves out as this all dries. Um, but I just think it is a really good product. I uh, probably ought to do a very specific review to the big roll just to let you know in the future what the product is, how to use it. So I'm getting some ideas for that. But I also now want to go back to doing some trains going by videos. These were always very popular with uh, Bolton Trinity Road and the old garden layout. And I want to get back into that. I'm very conscious that we haven't really had a trains going by video up here. And um, I want to send the camera wagon round and uh, just get some footage. Maybe I'll have that in a uh, video to come soon. What else, though, have I been up to up here? Well, over there, you can see I'm slowly building some of these retaining walls. Um, there's a whole load of them to go in along there. Once they're in, I'm going to be doing the ballasting in front. The water effect, still waiting to do that. That's going to be a bit of a millstone for me. I just never quite got the uh, uh, incentive, the inspiration to do that. These buildings are just loose. We've talked, I think, in one of the previous videos about these. That's just somewhere to put them out of the way. But that is where we are up to up here in the loft with Weir Yard. Um, that area there, still big, big area to go. Um, a lot of work left to do. 
but it's going to be one of the major areas um trying to get this area all finished off i'm going to do the embankment so it's got plenty of time to dry and we're getting there in the words of british rail we're getting there um so yeah it's a bit of a short update but i hope it has been really informative to you it's been really good to have your company up here in the loft in Weir Yard. But uh, as always, really interested to hear from you how your model railway building is going. Leave your comments uh, down below. Also, uh, don't forget uh, that uh, anything that you want to ask a question on, you can do that. I will try and get to answer them, but at the moment, ever so busy with so many different projects, it's really hard. So. I do read all the comments even if I don't answer them and I do appreciate every single one. But um, really being glad of your company. It's really nice to have you along here. And uh, don't forget we'll have another update next Friday on progress up here in Weir Yard. Uh, but uh, we've also got our live streams on Mondays, every single Monday at 7 o'clock. Uh, currently BST, British Summertime, which is GMT plus one for those of you who are not in the same time zone as me. Always good to have you company and uh, always good to be doing that, uh, usually with my friend Brian. And uh, we're going to be having Wednesday videos as well going up and uh, got quite a few different things for that. Trying to get a bit of variety. But until next time, you take really good care of yourself. And this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying thanks for your company. Bye for now. Today's video has been brought to you in part thanks to the generous donation of my fans on Patreon. And a huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Mark Anthony, Michael Churchwood, Bob Threeton, Alec Ralph, Anthony Hunt, William Wade, Wayne Johns and Offshore Allen. If you'd like to help support the show, head on over to patreon.com slash Jennifer Kirk. Thank you. Today's video has been brought to you by my books, Bringing Home the Stars, Twinkle Little Star, and also you can get the complete comic collections of All Over the House, Books 1, Books 2, and also the wacky zany Life of Nobty Mouse. Thanks and catch you later.